Sora has finally landed, leaving me no time to rest as it arrived just as I was finishing a video on Tencent's own AI video model, which just launched, Hunyuan video here if you want to check it out. And while it's exhausting, the timing is actually perfect because I've just come out of spending a ton of time with that AI video model, I'm able to compare it to Sora. And interestingly, one of the things that I mentioned in that video is with such a large gap of time from the initial announcement of OpenAI Sora up until now, Sora would have needed to have been an absolutely incredible model to make up for the huge time gap between the announcement and the model releasing. Especially considering that since the time of the initial announcement, so many competing platforms and models have come out with their own AI video models, with many of them making incredible leaps, whether it's closed source like Runway and Luma or open source like Hunyuan, all of which released with very little fanfare compared to Sora, allowing them to be measured against what they actually were versus the hype that was created over months and months of marketing material. So how does Sora stack up? To be honest, Sora does offer some improvements over other models currently available in the market at this time. Some of the examples that we'll see in this video are quite incredible. However, when you take into account the region locking, the price tag, and the guardrails, it starts to become a difficult platform to recommend as a video creator, especially when for considerably less, there are so many more options on the table that allow you to do a lot more than what Sora does. And ultimately, with a little bit of poking and prodding, you can get results that are very close, if not in some cases better than what Sora can produce. So let's start with the most contentious topic of OpenAI Sora, and that is the price tag. As of the time of this video, Sora is only available on the paid $20 tier and the pro $200 tier which is a little bit disappointing considering the fact that other AI video models such as Luma, Runway, and Minimax all launched with some kind of free access availability, and many of them still have a free access tier. Instead, with OpenAI, we need to jump into either the $20 or $200 packages. And even if you do jump in with one of the packages, the servers are so overloaded that you can find yourself waiting for up to 30 minutes to get a video generation done, which I'm guessing is not that surprising considering how many users are already on a plus plan with ChatGPT. As such, at the time of this recording, new user registrations for Sora are currently closed. However, I did see a tweet from Sam Altman saying that if you were on one of the paid plans, you would get access within 24 hours of the launch. So. If you're a paid user and you still don't have access, shoot me a message, I'd love to know. That is, unless you're in the EU or the UK or Norway. Yay for EU bureaucracy. While the EU has many things going for it, the bureaucracy around AI is a little ridiculous, leaving many of us in European countries having to wait weeks, if not months, to get access to the latest tools. And people wonder why the EU is starting to lag behind technologically. The worst part is, is that if you decide to use a VPN to try and access Sora, you're in breach of OpenAI's terms of service, meaning that they could potentially ban and delete your account. While it doesn't seem that they're following through with that, I have seen people use VPNs to try and access Sora. For many, that's just a risk they won't want to take. So what do you get if you decide to opt in to one of OpenAI's plans to use Sora? Well, on the $20 tier, you get a thousand credits, which comes out to about 50 video generations at 720p with a max duration of about five seconds, plus guardrails that prevent you from generating videos from images that contain people or cats or dogs that OpenAI assumes are people. Keeping those limitations in mind, I honestly find it difficult to recommend the plus plan for anybody thinking of getting into ChatGPT for the purpose of using Sora. While it's a nice addition if you're an existing user of the ChatGPT Plus plan, thinking about it carefully at five seconds per generation with a cap of 50 generations and the inability to use images with people in them creates a lot of limitations in terms of the stories that you can tell using Sora. I genuinely find it hard to find a use case where you need to generate five second clips other than maybe animating some cool images, creating a background or wallpaper, or just having some fun with some GIFs. Now, there is one additional tool that OpenAI has released with Sora called storyboarding, which could be a workaround for this, and I'll cover that later, but it still comes with a whole bunch of its own limitations. Now, if you're willing to fork out the 200 bucks a month to get into the pro plan, that's where things start to get a little more interesting. At the $200 plan, you can generate an unlimited number of videos on relaxed mode, which means that your generations will be pushed to the back of the queue, or you get a certain number in priority mode, which means that those will get bumped to the front of the queue. So you'll have to wait a lot less to get them. You can generate at 1080p and you can upload images with people on them to animate and make videos from. And your video length goes up to 20 seconds per video. On top of all that, 
you also get access to the O1 Pro model. Now, again, if you're just coming on to this plan to use Sora, you may not be interested in the O1 Pro model. So it kind of sucks to see that there's no modularization in the pricing. So now the question is, is the 200 bucks worth it? This is where the answer becomes a little bit less straightforward. And it depends entirely on whether you're able to get from OpenAI Sora the material and footage that you need. We're gonna jump in and look at a few examples now, but to be really quite frank, Tencent's AI video model is already very impressive and can generate videos of close to 1080p. So with a little bit of upscaling, you could get very comparable videos in terms of quality. Overall, the fidelity is very good. So it's now a matter of can you get better results with Sora? Furthermore, with the current generation times of about 20 to 30 minutes per video, unless you're generating constantly, it can start to become a little bit difficult to cover that cost. Now, I have read on Twitter, which we're gonna go look at some examples in now, that those generation times have dropped down to a couple of minutes in some cases. If that's the case and you're able to increase your output significantly, it starts to make those $200 seem a little bit more tenable. Again, as long as you're generating a ton of content. The results shown on Twitter seem to be a bit of a mixed bag. In many cases, I see a lot of the same issues that we find with other AI video models, such as Tencent, such as LTX, such as Luma and Minimax, but there are a few instances where the results are genuinely astounding. And if we get enough support on the Patreon, I will try and get the $200 tier and do a deep dive on actually producing qualitative content with Sora. Because ultimately that's the question. With all the limitations in place, can we actually take a vision in our heads and turn that into a cohesive story? Otherwise it's just a bunch of random clips with no real purpose other than, oh, it's cool, I made this with AI. So the first clip that we have over here, it was posted by El Cine. And by the way, I'm reposting a lot of these and posting my own videos up on Twitter. So if you wanna keep up with that, please go ahead and follow me. And we can see here that they've actually done a comparison with Sora and Hunyuan. And we can see here, as I said earlier, Hunyuan does absolutely phenomenal videos. Uh, they haven't given us the prompt, but we can see here that it's essentially a couple walking in a touristy area. I think I see Mount Rushmore there in the background. I see it over here as well. And the Sora video, well, the couple's walking backwards. I mean, yeah, it's not great, but it's not terrible. You could just reverse that, except for the part where the woman's legs are backwards. Whereas over here on Hunyuan, this is genuinely very authentic. If you didn't know what Mount Rushmore looks like, this would be real and you wouldn't think of it twice. So this is what I mean when I say that Hunyuan is not that far behind. I will say the Sora one does look slightly crisper, but that's useless if the video quality is not there. Now, this next example is one of those that actually shows what Sora can do in ideal circumstances. And I, I have to say that the results are really good and very compelling. Here, they've taken an image from Mid Journey. They're definitely on the $200 plan because it's got faces and they have animated it. And this is what those clips look like. And better than Tencent, OpenAI Sora model is able to maintain a phenomenal level of detail in the face, right? We can see here that there is animation, there's emotion, there's movement, and definitely these videos look like they could have been taken with a camera. However, while we can see the prompt here and its suggestion of tension in the character's face, the proof in the pudding is what can we do beyond these clips? And this is a common theme I'm going to keep coming back to is the whole point of being able to create these AI videos beyond it being a gimmick is we want to try and tell stories. So what happens if we can take a few of these clips of the same character and string them together in OpenAI storyboarding tool, which we'll cover in just a little bit. Here's another example from Bilawal Sidhu, again, comparing Hunyuan and Sora. And again, you can see here that Hunyuan is not very far behind the types of footage that you can get from Sora. And in fact, even this cat one that just came up a little minute ago, I would say Hunyuan does better because there's weirdness in the cat's actions, whereas this Hunyuan one, again, that looks like a nature shot. Here, the Hunyuan one is struggling a little bit with that puzzle block, I forget what they're called. Sora's is a little bit better. It's not having the warping, but it's definitely, definitely not a, um, I forget what they're called. If you remember, comment below. It's gonna drive me nuts. And again, the teddy bear ones. I think the Sora one is slightly better here, but again, it depends on the prompt. It's hit or miss. The only thing that you're really getting better here is the crispness in the video, which I think Hunyuan is not gonna be far behind in making happen. Now, one area that both Hunyuan and Sora do struggle with, which we started to see a little bit earlier, is this kind of action-y movement, right? This is a Sora video by Didi, basically, 
making a very good point that gymnastics is very much the Turing test for AI video. I don't have an example from Hunyuan, but I have here some other action videos that I've shown, and you can see that both models are struggling with action. Uh, here, the snowboarders jumping all over the place. These anime girls are not having a very good fight. The Sora gymnast is also going all wibbly wobbly, spinity spinity. Now. One of the cool things that Sora does have, which Hunyuan does not have at this time, you can get some video to video unofficially on Comfy UI. And they have said video to video and video guidance features are on the way. But with Sora, you can upload something like this video down here at the bottom and use that as a guide for Sora to kind of follow the motion. And there's another example I'll show you guys as well. This is one of the better ways that I've seen where we can start to think about controlling OpenAI Sora model, right? If we're able to upload, again, a bunch of clips in our bedroom, in our kitchen, where we're acting out the movement of what we want things to happen in the scene, and OpenAI Sora can use that as a basis and generate consistent elements in multiple clips, then we start to get somewhere really interesting, and I will say that the 200 bucks is definitely worth it. However, without those missing pieces, it's hard for me to recommend it at this point, but this is a great step in the right direction. I'm almost done. But this is another really cool one that I saw here from Alex Patrascu using the blend feature. So taking two videos or two images and kind of creating the sequence between them, right? Which is what I said earlier is, you know, we generate one image in mid journey, another one in mid journey, and we kind of let Sora generate the frames in between. It's come out really well. There's still definitely a bit of weirdness in the physics, but you know, we suspend belief in a lot of TV shows and movies that we watch. So I don't see why we couldn't do that with AI generated video. It might just need to be something that we get used to, but there's almost something even sublime about this. It's just, it's cool. It looks great. I like it. Now, one thing that I've seen a lot of people say that Sora does really well, which is a common theme on this channel, is hands. And while the comparison here, again, by El Huang Lu, the hands look great. They look like they're holding the glass perfectly fine. There's not really any weirdness there. She's not really drinking that in the right way. Again, Hunyuan here just does a more natural job and there's not really any problems with the hands. People hold their wine glasses like that all the time. However, as I've mentioned before, Sora still wins out in the overall crispness and clarity of the video. This is one more example of what I was showing you guys about the video driving feature. We can see here that using the remix feature where it's basically video to video, you've kind of got this broom here on the bottom image, basically imitating a spaceship landing. And at two different strengths at five, you've still got the stick appearing here, but it is starting to look a little bit like a spaceship. And at six, it definitely like the stick is gone. It's a proper spaceship, but the remix is a little too aggressive because something weird is happening with the spaceship here. I think it almost changes or crashes, but you can see what I mean about how we can use everyday objects to direct a scene and Sora can create them. It just needs to happen consistently. Now, I've shown a bunch of mixed results. I've saved the best for last, and that is from Boltron. And he says here that everything that we're looking at here is a non-edited single camera shot video. The scenes are cut and pasted. And basically he's saying that spending 15 minutes with Sora is not gonna get you good results. You gotta spend, put time into it. But if you do, you can come up with results like this. And I do have to say, it is very impressive. I'm guessing this is probably using the storyboard feature, which I'm gonna cover in just a moment, but it's great to see how it's going from one environment to another, keeping some relatively decent consistency. And it's just, it's cool. I, I enjoy watching it. It's interesting. I'd love to have the credit and time to play around with this and go into a deep dive as to what this model can do. If you guys wanna see more of these results, I suggest you follow me on Instagram or on Twitter where I'm gonna be looking for all kinds of examples in Sora and reposting them, of course, crediting the creators as I've done here. Or if you have access to Sora, please come by the Discord, share what you're doing. We'd love to see it. We'd love to talk about it. What are you having trouble with? What are you loving? Come and tell us. So in addition to the model, OpenAI's also released a couple of extra add-ons for use with Sora. One is this snazzy new UI, which is very reminiscent of Mid Journeys, where you can see all of your video generations as well as stuff that other people have created, what prompts they've used to come up with that video, and you can remix anything that you've created or someone else has created, meaning that you can either use it as an input to help guide your output, as I showed you earlier with the examples, or you can stitch onto it and extend it and so on. Now, 
If you're not in a sharing mood, this is turned on by default. If you want to turn off sharing, you need to go into your settings and turn it off. The highlight feature though, that has come out with Sora is the storyboarding feature. This is a super cool feature, which basically allows us to set the story beats of the narrative that we're trying to tell either in the form of prompts or images. And Sora will basically try and create multiple video clips to try and connect everything together. So if you've got two images, it will try and take you from the first image to the second image. Or if you've got a bunch of prompts, it will say, okay, well, Kat is doing this in slide one, Kat is doing this in slide two, and then it will try and kind of connect those prompts together into a longer video clip or multiple clips that it stitches together. I think the clip from OpenAI explains it best. Storyboard is our most advanced editing creation tool that gives you the control to direct actions in a sequence across a familiar timeline. Lies a timeline where you can sequence your actions in time. Let's start by setting our scene. I want a red crane with a yellow tail to stand in a stream. And then about halfway through, I want it to dip its head into the water. So I'll come down to my timeline and click to create a new storyboard card about halfway through. In this card, I'm just going to describe the next action. The crane dips its head. Perfect. Now, looking back at the timeline, you'll notice that there's space between my first card and my second card because it gives Sora time to connect the first set of actions with the second set. You can see my crane standing in the water and then about halfway through, it dips its head in. Now, this feature is not revolutionary. Other AI video tools have similar things. I know that Runway has its own storyboard planning feature. And in fact, they've even got one now that allows you to create multiple timelines sim simultaneously to see which timeline is the best suited for the narrative that you're trying to tell. However, the way that OpenAI has done this is very clean, very straightforward, very easy to use. And it's definitely a step in the right direction to allowing us to create video content that is useful and usable, not just a gimmick. And the storyboard tool is probably the best tool that you've got to try and craft anything usable from the plus plan. You can string together a bunch of prompts and it will just generate five second clips to try and link them together to create some kind of useful narrative. However, again, with the caps in place, keep in mind that you're limited to five second videos, 50 videos, which is about 250 seconds, which comes out to about just over four minutes. That doesn't take into account any generations that you're gonna have to throw away because the result was garbage. So once again, if you really wanna get serious about using Sora, they are pushing you up to that $200 tier. And it kind of sucks that there's not a middle tier where they could have either given us similar features to the pro plan, but limited to either 720p or given us the pro package, but with limitations on how much we can generate or even just give us a video only plan. So unless you're a serious video creator, you've got the cash to spare, or you know how you're going to monetize that video content, 200 bucks a month is a tough pill to swallow. And that's Sora's open AI. What do you think? Do you have access to it? As I said before, please come by the Discord and share what you're doing. Do you think that the 200 bucks is a ridiculous price to charge for this new AI video model, especially when you've got amazing stuff like Hun Yuan around the corner? Which, by the way, if you wanna try out, I have launched a little side project called Kaiju Gen. It's a little image and video generator that I put together as an easy way to try out different prompts with different AI image models. It works great with prompt crafters and I've integrated Hun Yuan. I'm planning to add in LTX and a few other video models. And if you do decide to use Kaiju Gen, you are supporting this channel. So if you're interested in trying it out, please go check it out there. It is new, it is a work in progress. I did build it myself, so I am constantly trying to improve it, add things on. So if there's anything that you want, that you like, that you don't like, feel free to message me or drop a message over in the Discord and I'll try and fix it. Finally, if you found this video helpful, interesting, please don't forget to like and subscribe and support me on Patreon. I am adding in a few tiers that will include credits for Kaiju Gen for Patreon supporters and I am giving out credits to longtime supporters as a little thank you for staying with me and supporting the channel for as long as you have. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys on the next one.